Hey guys, here we go with video number one for chapter six, Civilizations of the Americas. So, so far this year, we focused on early and classical civilizations in what is often referred to as the Old World, namely Asia and Europe. Right? We learned about the first civilizations in the Middle East, the rise of civilizations in China and India, as well as European civilizations in Greece and Rome. And one of the things we've learned is that even centuries ago, there was some interaction between these areas. There were other parts of the world, though, that were completely cut off from the old world, old world of Europe and Asia. And we're talking about the Americas. Now, this is not to say that people didn't live here, though. Right? For, we're going to be talking about societies and civilizations that were scattered all throughout the Americas. And for the first section... We're going to be talking about the civilizations of Mesoamerica. So before we talk about what Mesoamerica is, let's just go over some basic terminology of the Americas, right? So what do we mean when we refer to the Americas? Well, the Americas, first and foremost, we got to know are geographic terms. They're not necessarily terms of countries. Uh, they are split up into two major continents. You've got, let me just move me kind of, it'd be best if I go up here, I think. Eh, if I cover Canada, who cares, right? Uh, you've got North America. And you've got South America down here, right? So those are your two major continents, North and South America. But within these continents, you have some subregions. And one of them, a very important subregion, is called Mesoamerica. Now, Mesoamerica, if we zoom in here, this is like this region here that kind of zooms out over this one. Uh, you've got, for the most part, Mexico and Central America, right? So that's what we're going to be talking about in this first section, where civilizations start in this green shaded area of Mesoamerica. Now, it's also important to remember that America is geographically isolated from the other continents, as I just said in the introduction of this video. It's, it's separated by the oceans, by the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. We learned back in the very beginning of this course that modern humans first evolved in Africa. So this leads up to the question of how humans got from Africa all the way to the Americas. So let's talk about how people settled in the Americas. Now, we don't know 100% for sure, but scholars think that humans first arrived in America sometime between 12 and 10,000 years ago. Now, that long ago, humans did not have boats that could cross an entire ocean. So how'd they get here? They got here by walking. They crossed a land bridge between Siberia and Alaska. This land bridge no longer exists. You know, humans migrated during the Ice Age. Back then, because so much ice had froze in the Arctic region, water levels actually dropped, exposing land that humans could migrate across. So all the lightly shaded areas here are areas that today are underwater. This region through here that I'm circling is called the Bering Strait. Remember, Strait is a narrow strip of water that divides two larger land masses. That is water today. But if you were to get in a time machine and go back 10 to 12,000 years ago, that would be land. Okay, and then as what happened is, well, actually, let me show you just one other map here and get that out of the way. All right, so this gives you another sense. All of the green shaded area, you look down here, that's landmass that existed 20,000 years ago. Present day landmass, right, that's our current mass. But all the green, that would have been land. So you think, well, what happened to it? How did it get covered in water? As the ice age melted, all of this ice eventually led to rising uh, water levels. And so that uh, those exposed areas of land became covered in water as they are today. All right, so this bridge was in an area today known as the Bering Strait, as I just said, right? You got the Bering Sea, and this was known as the Bering Land Bridge. So it wasn't a man-made bridge. It was a natural strip of land that no longer exists. All right, so over the following centuries, as you see by the arrows here, humans slowly, and I emphasize the word slowly, migrated throughout both continents, uh, settling from the Arctic Circle, Right, which would be all the way around here, all the way down throughout North and South America. And as they migrated into a variety of different environments, they had to adapt to them. That's what humans do. It's important to remember that the Americas are very, very diverse in terms of climate and living conditions. You look it up in the north, you've got Arctic, you've got subarctic, still pretty cold. Uh, you've got the green, which would be fairly mild. Then as you get down here, it gets very, very hot, sometimes tropical, like in Brazil and South America, desert areas. So you've got a lot of different environments, a lot of different living conditions. Uh, nor you know, in North America, humans adopted more of a nomadic style of life, of kind of moving around. But throughout much of the rest of Americas, particularly Central and South America, they developed farming. 
All right, so about 7,000 BCE, so it was about 9,000 years ago, farming develops in Mesoamerica, right? The region that we uh, just discovered. Uh, it first spread mostly through Mesoamerica and South America. They cultivated crops native to the Americas, such as various beans, tomatoes, peppers, and especially maize. Now, maize is the term Native Americans use for corn, and wild corn is incredibly nutritious and capable of sustaining large populations. This, in turn, led to the creation of villages in South America about three thousand years ago or so. South America was the only part of the Americas that saw domestication of animals. Okay, so domestication of animals only took place here in South America, or at least livestock animals. All right, so actually a better uh, way to specifically put this would be animals for livestock. For instance, dogs were domesticated all throughout the Americas, but they're not livestock. Right? They're used for as companions for protection. Livestock are work animals or animals that you are going to eat. Now, most animals that we associate with livestock today, such as horses, cows, pigs, sheep, they're not native to the Americas. They were brought to the Americas by Europeans starting in the 1500s. So if you went in a time machine to the year 500 and visited South America, you wouldn't find any of those animals. The only domesticated livestock animals were these things. All right. One of my least favorite animals, llamas. Now, llamas were not much. Uh, they were not much for farming and plowing. You look at these skinny legs. They really can't do much. They weren't even good for riding. They were mostly used for the wool to make clothes. So as farming spread and populations increase, the Americas are going to see the formations of civilizations. And the first were the Olmecs. Now, the Olmecs, uh, they, we don't know a whole lot about them, but they are noteworthy because they are the earliest civilization in the Americas, right? About fifth, they last from about 1500 to 400 BCE. So still, you know, two to 3000 years ago. And they lived in the tropical region along the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, I meant to put that up first. Sorry, guys. I messed up with our maps here. There we go. Sorry about the little delay there. I had to fix something real quick. Uh, so they started in this region around the Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf of Mexico is this body of water right here. All right, today it would be around U.S. states like Texas, Louisiana, and Florida, and so forth. And this is where the Olmecs uh, were down in this region. Now, as I said before, we don't know a lot about the Olmecs, but archaeological findings show that priests had pretty high rank. And one of the reasons people believe this is because of the works of stone art, such as these massive stone heads that we have. All right, you see the size of these guys compared to uh, an average human uh, right there. And we're not 100% sure what they were used for or who they represent, but common guesses are that the heads are gods, right, signifying the importance of religion and therefore a high standing of priests. We also know that the Olmecs engaged in extensive trade. Sorry for still having these a little out of order, but we'll just go through them now. So now we're going to be talking about extensive trade networks. You know, there are objects found in Olmec temples that archaeologists know are from other Mesoamerican people, signifying a network of trade with them. The Olmecs also had a strong influence in the region. All right, so we're going to be talking about this right here. Um, you know, they had calendars and they used a system of writing that were adopted by other Mesoamerican people. And this has led many scholars to describe the Olmecs as a mother uh, culture of Mesoamerica. One of the people the Olmecs influenced were the Maya, but we're going to be talking about those in the next video.